All right, so, so yeah, so Jesus was, um, uh, was walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, and he said to them. So he saw them, not necessarily that they saw him. He saw them, reached to them, and said to them, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now, the, you know, like I, I don't know if you heard me say this part, John Maxwell says, if you um, are, think you're leading people but nobody's following you, then you're simply going for a walk, all right? And so here, what determined whether or not he had followers is he looked behind him and they were following him. If he stood there waiting for them to make the decision to follow him, then he's waiting for them. He's actually following them. He's not leading them at that point. He's going, so do you want to follow me or not? Well, then he's determining whether he's going to lead or not based on whether or not they follow. What we have to decide in the things that we have authority in, that we're passionate about in life, we've got to decide to take that journey. And then we'll notice who follows. We can't wait for people to say, I'll follow you and then lead them. That's not leadership. That's um, manage it, management by fiat is they are letting me do something so that I'll do it. That's not leadership. Leadership is going somewhere and people want to follow you because they believe in, in where you're going. And so this, you know, so this actually shows how he started his ministry. He reached out to people. I have people that, today that I see, they don't reach out to anybody. They're just hoping somebody will follow so that they can do something. We have to initiate it. If we feel like we have a mission, the only person that's going to be fighting for our mission is us. Is they're going to need to, um, they're going to need to know that we're going somewhere. So the first thing we got to do if we're going to lead anything is decide we're going somewhere. And then when we see somebody that we think might fit that, we reach out to them, invite them, but then we continue moving forward toward our goal. We walk away from them. We, you, it's essential that we walk away from them. This is the contemporary application I'm bringing to the scripture because that's the methodology Jesus did here. He saw them, went to them, said to them, follow me, and then he walked away. This can apply to many different aspects of our life today is if we want to lead something, we got to decide we're going somewhere before anybody's going to follow us. I know people that will approach their, their business or even their ministry with, if I get a large enough consensus, then I'll do it. That's not leadership. That's you looking for a club that allow you to do something. And so what we need to do is decide we're going to lead in something. And that's what he did here. Uh, and he's not trying to win people over. He's not trying to get people to, he's not trying to please them so that they'll follow him. And we know that here from Luke chapter 9. It says, and he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever who wishes to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake is the he who will save it. What, what does a man profit if he gains the whole world but loses or forfeits himself? So right there, he's not sitting there going, hey, I want everybody to be, belong to this. It's, it's, it's going to cost you to follow me. What I'm about to do isn't going to be easy. It's not going to be fun. It's not necessarily going to be a, a, a blast, but it is, it is profound. It is important. It is eternal, you know, his mission. In the same way, as we look to lead people, we need to take a look at, um, I, I find it very important to not oversell and then under, under deliver, is I need to let them know this isn't going to be easy. It'll, it'll be simple, but it won't be easy in different aspects of life. Uh, when I'm discipling somebody, I, I'm not trying to paint a rosy picture of, well, Jesus has a wonderful plan for your life, and so if you follow me in this thing, then it's going to solve all your problems. No, in fact, he's going to give you some new problems. Because now you have an enemy. Now you have somebody that wants to thwart what you're doing because, you know, you are now aligned with Christ. 
So I, I just, I'm not looking to uh, get people to join a club that's fun and happy clappy. I'm, I'm wanting to go somewhere meaningful and then have people follow me because they believe I'm going somewhere. So when we look around, we put our finger in the air, see which way the wind's blowing, hoping that, you know, something that seems like it's lining up so that I can go do it. Then we're not leading. That's not leadership. That's opportunist. That is, I'm doing something because I have the opportunity to take advantage of it. Leading is something needs to be done that I feel matters. So I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to do this. Jesus is going out here. He's walking by the Sea of Galilee. He sees some people. He goes to them, invites them to follow him, and then he walks away. That really is the methodology of leadership is I'm going somewhere. I see some people that are highlighted to me. I interact with them. This applies in so many different aspects of life. But I'm going to actually go backwards now and go into Matthew 4, into the, some verses before it that kind of will lead, like, okay, so how do I start a lifestyle of leading? So let's go to that next slide here. And this is when he was tempted in the wilderness. And it says, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said, all these I will give to you. If you fall down and worship me, then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him, and behold, the angels came and began to minister to him. Why would I be talking about this? Because before you can lead anybody, you've got to know who you are. You've got to know who you're following. And... And it was right after this passage where the, where the enemy is tempting him to follow him and to worship him instead and get his eyes off of God. It's right after this temptation, he walks out and tells these guys to follow him. Jesus does. Right after the enemy tries to lure him into self-worship and idolatry right after that temptation, because he's in the wilderness without any food or drink. He comes out of that saying, you know, get, get away, Satan. The next thing he does is, is he goes and he, because he's chosen the father, he goes and tells people to follow him. Reason I think that's really important is a lot of times we want to lead people, but we don't know where we're going. We don't know what our mission is. And actually we're leading them in the wrong direction because we're leading them in something that we've been lured into that we're tempted to do. That isn't, you know, isn't all that. A, cont a contemporary application for me. Uh, let me let me talk about it from a spiritual perspective and then a business perspective. On a spiritual perspective, one of the reasons why I became a leader is because I really believe I've, I've received a vision from the Lord that um, I wasn't trying to belong to a club. I wasn't looking to go into ministry because all the people I looked up to were ministers. Nobody I looked up to was a minister. I felt like I was supposed to do it because of a vision I, I believe I received from the Lord. And so the temptation was to go do what everybody else was doing and do it the way that they were doing it. You know, uh, if you just do these things, your life will work out. Well, I had to follow what was given to me internally. And so you got to choose. Am I going to choose the ways of the world or am I going to choose God? basically. And that's the same temptations going on here. So when I've got the right motivation, I got the right vision, then I can lead others because I'm going somewhere that is propelled in me, but I got to be following somebody because I'm not all that great. I'm not that smart. I'm going after something that was given to me internally, which was something I believe God put in my heart to do, you know? And so we've got to be following something other than ourselves in order to have a good vision. It's got to be God's vision. 
but let me put that also in perspective as far as uh, from a business standpoint is I've got to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. I've got to have my own moral conviction of why I'm doing whatever business venture I'm doing. And it's got to be for the right reasons for the, actually the exact same initiative that I just talked about in ministry. I've got to know I'm doing this for the right reasons and that this is something I'm supposed to be doing. When I'm in that position, now I can go back to people and say, follow me because I'm going somewhere that's bigger than myself. Does that make sense? Absolutely. If you're just trying things, if you're just shaking the bushes, hoping that something works out, we are an adult version of follow the leader. That's not leadership. That's being a scavenger. I'm just trying to find, I'm throwing stuff on the wall and see what will stick. Nobody wants to follow that. Nobody's inspired by that. What we want to do is we want to uh, know that we are passionate about something, that we have a conviction about something. And if we really carry that, people will want to follow that. If we're accommodating people and just trying to make them happy, they're not going to follow that. They're not looking to be patronized. They're looking to be inspired. Any questions on what I just shared? Does that click? Or do you have any questions or concerns or disagreements with that, that view? Makes perfect sense to me. Good. Any thoughts on your end, Howard? Just uh, aligning daily focus, daily just, you know, just making sure you know where true north is. Oh, absolutely. See, when, you go, when you're going somewhere, and, and this will happen, guys. It, it happened to Jesus, so it's going to happen to us. You're going to have some people that are locked into whatever routine they've got. They're not going to really value where you're going. So if you don't have clear vision, you're going to get discouraged. But if you have clear vision, then you're going to have people that are going to be drawn by the fact that you're, you're, you have a conviction and they're going to want to follow that. But you've, you've got to know where you're going. Leadership is one of the things that's – to me is is badly needed in our society i don't really see much very much of it i see a lot of people that are um reacting to their environment and they're calling it leadership but it really isn't leadership leadership is it starts with an internal vision that is yours that you own and um so we we need to we need to be salt and light and lead people out of things into greater things um in, in business, in life, in ministry. Actually, my view is everything we do is ministry. Everything we do is sacred. There's no secular or sacred for a believer. Everything we do is sacred. So, so with this, we need to cultivate a follow me environment where I have something I believe in and I will attract people that want to follow that. I need to invite them though. I can't just expect them to follow me when I'm not telling them what it is I'm passionate about. I need to reach to them like Jesus did to Andrew and Peter and say, follow me. I'll make you fishers of man, but then walk away. Walking away is probably the most powerful point is I don't need anybody. I desire to help everybody, but I don't need anybody. If I come to that point, there's going to be people who want to follow that. You know, there's old, there's, um, there was a, a statement in, I'm trying to remember the name of this. Uh, it's a, it was a book for men. It was a devotional book. But the gist of this, the thought was this. is um, It was talking about men and women, you know, uh, couples. And it goes, gentlemen, the wife does not want to be the journey. She wants to be taken on a journey. She wants to be taken on an adventure. She doesn't want to be the adventurer because she knows who she is. <laughs> and she knows she will disappoint because we're all just people. We're limited in our, in our grace and in our abilities. They want to be taken on an adventure. People want to be taken on an adventure. They don't want to be the adventure. They don't want you saying, I'm leading you in something that I'm really excited about because you're part of it. No, they want you to take them somewhere. So in order to take them somewhere, you got to know where you're going. So where are you going? What vision, what why has God given you that you're contending for? That 
you know, is just, you've got to see it. It's not like, I hope this will work out, but it's, I have to see this work out. I'm committed to seeing this work out. When you have that mindset, that's when you're going to start to lead and that's when you're going to create a movement. Does that all make sense? Yes, it does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure does. So dig deep and create a movement and don't ever apologize for it. All right. Anybody have any prayer requests? Well, Bill, Father, I, I just pray. Bill, I do for a family. Yeah, nearby. go for it. Um, young man uh, just left his, his parents' house, and it's just a very tumultuous situation. And just prayers for, for his parents and for this young man and for the family that is trying to help him. Um, for clarity, because he is, he's, he's gone through severe depression. Um, just need prayer for this family. Well, Father, we do. We pray. We pray for the Ministry of Reconciliation. We pray, Lord God, that, that um, clarity in the, in the drama, in the, in the tensions would, would come to pass by your, by your spirit. And Lord, I just pray for each one here that you would instill in us uh, clarity of vision that we would not be tossed here and there, that we would know what it is you put us on this planet to do so that we can be salt and light, so we can lead many in a way that will be a blessing. So, Father, I ask that you surround each one here. Just surround us from all the distractions. Help us stay centered and focused in your purpose and in your will. And we ask that for this young man and for others that are uh, dealing with uh, upheaval this time of year the, with so many people going through depression and and a lot of emotional volatility lord that you would be our stable source that you would be our guide you'd be our strong tower mm -hmm. and lord lead us with the convictions you put in our heart in jesus name amen thank you thank all you. right well bless you all and uh, have a great day, and hopefully see you, see you next week, all right? Take care. Thank you, Bill. Take care. Thank you, Bill.